Hi everyone, it's Elizabeth. Welcome back to my channel. So today's makeup tutorial is actually going to be two makeup tutorials in one video. Both have been inspired by Jennifer Lawrence. I originally saw a photo online of Jennifer Lawrence at a recent red carpet event where she had a very steely gray and black kind of smoky eye and very, very dark, dramatic matte lips. Well, when I was looking for that photo to explore it from different angles, I ended up stumbling across a completely different photo shoot from the November 2013 Harper's Bazaar and I fell in love with that photo shoot so much I ditched my original plan and went with the two looks I saw from that photo shoot instead. This is me. I start with one thing and end up at the other. But anyway, I fell in love with the looks. One of them is a more dramatic silvery taupe eye that's a little bit kind of almost creamy glossy looking and a very dark purplish lip and then the second one is this look which is much more of a nude eye and a darker reddish brown lip this is showing up a bit more red on camera than it actually is in, red, in real life in real life it's much darker and more brown toned so just be aware of that anyway love the looks the original makeup artist was Monica Blunder but I couldn't find any of the original products used in that photo shoot so I I just matched it as close as I could with products I already had on hand and what I could see in the photographs. I will leave original links to all those photos that I was inspired by, both the original that I was going to do and then the ones that I ended up doing if you would like to see how well my makeup turned out, how similar it is to that one, or just see what the original photos are because it is stunning. I will leave a little disclaimer. Obviously, I'm not a real makeup artist. Obviously, I look nothing at all like Jennifer Lawrence. This is just my approximation of a real-world look taken from a magazine photo shoot. So clearly, there's going to be a little bit of disparity there. But I had a ton of fun doing this, and I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you do, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. It means the world to me you do. I hope you're all having a wonderful day, and I will talk to you soon. So the first step is to get this hair out of the way. I just washed and conditioned it the night before and let it air dry, grabbed a few bobby pins, pulled the first half of my hair back up, and bobby pinned it out of the way. I really wasn't trying to do a hair tutorial too much here. I was just showing what I did to kind of recreate what she had going on in one of the photos. As you can see here, I really didn't put a lot of time or effort into it, but it's pretty similar to what one of the photos looked like, so we're going to call it good and move on. <laughs> I basically just created a very sloppy, messy French twist and let some of the hair kind of look like I'm adjusting a wig here, but this is, this is my own hair. I'm just pulling it down so it's softer and framing my face. Then I've already washed and moisturized my face for the day. I'm just adding a little bit of a hydrating facial mist to give me a nice base. And then I'm taking a lotion and a full coverage concealer and mixing my own tinted moisturizer. I don't wear a foundation, so for a very flawless look like a photo shoot, I had to create something that would give me that even skin tone. And if you forget your foundation or do something else, this works really well instead of regular foundation it basically works the same way and I'm just using an elf three dollar brush to buff and stipple it into my skin. Once you have a really flawless base her makeup in this photo shoot was gorgeous impromptu foundation dance break I'm weird then I go back in with my concealer just to pinpoint any blemishes that are showing through the tinted moisturizer I made and just push it in with the same brush. Then I go in with a clean brush and some powder just to set that concealer and quasi foundation I made and I pretty much just covered my entire face with it. Because it was a photo shoot her makeup was very very flawless. I then go in with Max Naked Lunch as my inner corner highlight and her inner corner was very radiant and glowy but it wasn't very frosty. It was just very iridescent and, and glowy. This looks really well. I also took it along my brow bone. Then I went in with Max Satin Taupe. This was very close to the photo that I'm working off of with the lid color. It was all across her lid and up into her outer part of her brow bone area. The lower portion, as you can see, I'm taking it from my lid up onto that brow bone and kind of elongating my eye slightly. It wasn't super sharp or defined in the photo. It was quite soft and smudgy. So this is a slightly less editorial version but it's very close to the original. I then went in with a Bare Minerals Loose eyeshadow. The look in the photograph I'm working off of was a very shimmery, almost kind of glossy looking eyelid. So going over with a loose powder that's got a lot of reflective quality will give you that look without actually having to worry about it sliding off your face. Then I went back in with a angled 
brow brush that I use as an eyeliner brush and that satin taupe and ran it along my lower lash line. J-Law's look in this photograph was very simple on the upper lid and a little bit more stark and dramatic along the lower lash line. I didn't want to make it super editorial, but I wanted to keep it true, so after I went in with the eyeshadow, I took a creamy brown eyeliner and focusing mainly on the outer portion of my lower lash line, I applied it there and then went through and blended it out. That same brush I just used a little bit earlier. Go. I'm choking, sorry. Then I went in with my CoverGirl Clump Crusher and applied that to my upper and lower lash line. Her eyebrows in the photo were much darker than mine, so I went in with that same dark brown eyeliner pencil to use as a brow pencil. Now it gets a little scary here for a minute, but don't worry, I toned down the brows. It looks terrifying, horrifying, just awful, and I go in and fix it in a little bit, so don't worry about it. Um, if you have actual brow products in a shade that matches your eyebrows, I might suggest using that instead of what I did, but I make do with what I got. So, moving right along, I just kind of shaped and darkened up my brows. I then went in with a NYX Round Case lipstick, and it's a very dark, plummy purple. It's pretty dang close to the shade in the photo shoot, and it's super cheap, so that's great. I used a lip brush to give a more precise application after I pat it on a little bit towards the center of my lips. I just went in to outline my lips and fill them in completely with this color. I have a cold and I'm sorry I sound like I smoke three packs of cigarettes a day. I don't. I just don't feel well. Great time to record a voiceover, right? Yeah, totally. And I finally go in to deal with those brows, which are scaring small children and to be honest, me. So after I've dealt with my brows and toned them down a bit, I go in with a dark reddish lip gloss with a lot of glow glitter and do the same thing, just top off that lipstick to give it a little bit more of a glossy look and deepen up the color a tiny bit. And because I am a dork, I completely forgot to apply my cheek products until now, and I just took a new kind of brownie rose color, very natural, neutral, matte blush and applied that from the apples of my cheeks back towards my hairline. And that's the completed look for a sophisticated kind of early fall makeup look. I really like the way this turned out, I think it's going to be fun to wear. Now look number two. I just took off all of my eye makeup and my lipstick. I kept my face makeup the exact same. I went back in and curled my eyelashes and then took my Steel of the Natural palette and a large fluffy brush and then a matte kind of off-white eyeshadow and applied that all over my lid and onto my brow bone. For this look, her eye makeup was very, very simple. It was not super stark or anything and I did take a little bit of a light kind of nude brown through my crease. And then taking that same color, I worked it through my brows just to give them some soft definition that weren't quite as terrifying as the last bunch. Ugh. I then went in with the L'Oreal Super Slim Eyeliner, which is the perfect eyeliner for this look. I did not want to look like I'm wearing eyeliner. I just didn't want to lose my eyes in a really blanked out face and blanked out eyes. I wanted some definition in there, so I just kept it really close to the lash line. No winged eyeliner or anything. Then I went in with a lip brush and a liquid lipstick. This liquid lipstick is very similar in color and texture to the lip product that she was wearing in the second image I was working off of. This is not my favorite product to wear, honestly. I don't really like it a lot, but it really does look pretty dang close to what she was wearing, so I went ahead and used it anyway. And it does last a fairly long time, which is great, so there's bonus points for that. I just don't particularly like the feel of it on my lips or the way it wears off, but that's just personal preference. And I wanted to let you know, I did not necessarily recommend this if you don't already have it. I would just recommend picking out a color that you already have in your collection that's similar. I wouldn't recommend running out and buying this shade necessarily. And that's the finished look for look number two. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I will talk to you soon, guys. Love you lots. Bye.